Hey, good morning. Welcome back. We're in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 4, today, verses 14 and 15. Here's what they say. Then Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee, and news of him went out through all the surrounding region, and he taught in their synagogues, being glorified by all. Well, this is interesting. Jesus has been out. He's been away, you know, disappeared. He's in the wilderness for 40 days. He is victorious there. The devil finally departs. And here we find that Jesus comes back. And what does he come back with? He's just been tested. He's, he's, he's sort of on the hungry side, you know, no food for 40 days. Then Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit. So when Jesus comes back, he, uh, he's, he's, uh, he's got the belt cinched up a little tighter, I guess, you know. But he comes in the power of the Spirit. Because it's better to spend 40 days alone with God and his Holy Spirit in the wilderness without food than it is to, uh, you know, any other combination. You know, like, I, uh, I guess I'll have pizza, but no Jesus. That's, that's, no, that's not going to work. It's not going to work at all. The devil, the devil will give you all the pizza you need. So Jesus returns in the power of the Spirit. Once we go through a spiritual test, you know, sometimes there's a, there's a big depression after that. It, it happens to Elijah and some different people in the Bible. But it doesn't have to. And we notice here that Jesus comes. He's been tested. He's come through. He's walked so closely with his Father that now he comes in the power of the Spirit. I believe you and I can go out day by day into our life, living our life, doing the things we have to do this, this day, this new day. And we can do it in the power of the Spirit. Why, why wouldn't we? Why would we pick something less? Uh, doesn't make sense to me. Now, news goes out uh, throughout the surrounding region, and I do believe that Jesus is doing miracles. John, at the end of the Gospel of John, it says, you know, even if we put every, there's not room for all the books in the world to contain all the things that Jesus did. Well, maybe that's a kind of a strong statement, but I think what he's trying to say is that Jesus was constantly doing good, and so it's all right. Maybe when we get to heaven, not maybe, but we will get to find out about all kinds of other wonderful things that Jesus did that weren't actually preserved in the Bible for us. We're going to learn more about Jesus and his character because of those things as well. So he taught in their synagogues, and we want to remember this as well. Some people have this, you know, big experience thing. Well, the Bible is just about, uh, uh, Christianity is just, you know, what, we, what doesn't really matter what, what the teaching is. What matters is, you know, we have experience, you know, we can uh, do this or do that. that. That's a spiritual experience. What matters, we, we do need to have a spiritual experience, but Jesus is teaching in the synagogue. So again, what can you and I do? We can be in the Bible. We can be in the Word. Jesus wants to teach us. You know, if he didn't want to teach us, he could have trimmed this down, you know, maybe, you know, five pages instead of 1,500 pages. I think we need to be letting him teach us. What a blessing it is, too. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for your word. Thank you that we can live day by day in the power of your spirit. Thank you that as you teach us, uh, we will be able to follow your principles, and our lives can be blessings to others because of it. So help us now, Lord. Help us to follow out this same example, Lord. Be in our lives, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. May God's blessing be with you today. May Jesus be in your life.